the CBS Sports Family of Networks, the highest standard in sports television, including the CBS Sports Network, Showtime Sports, CBSSports.com, and the CBS Sports Radio Network, the best in sports online, on radio, and on the air. CBS Sports, expect it here. When you engage in the 180 mile per hour chariot chase known as the Geico Motorcycle AMA Pro Road Racing Series, your preparation includes donning what can only be described as a modern day suit of armor. Girding for battle, these gladiators of go rely upon a collection of protective gear closely resembling that sported by the Knights of Yore. Gloves, boots, full body leathers, and of course helmets are all carefully put in place to protect each combatant from the very real dangers encountered each time a leg is thrown over the 21st century equivalent of a war horse. And with good reason. Oh, big crash in the tri-oval. Down goes Dane Westby and Taylor Knapp. Wow. Clearly, such equipment brings a whole new meaning to the term self-defense. Welcome to CBS Sports Network's coverage of the Geico Motorcycle AMA Pro Road Racing Series presented by 1-800-MOTORCYCLE. Coming to you this week from the beautiful and historic grounds of the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course in Lexington, Ohio. Where as most of the courses visited throughout the season, the riders competing here often do real-world testing of the safety equipment designed to protect them from harm. This facility has hosted professional motorcycle racing since 1983, when Steve Wise won the Superbike event on May 21st of that year. Now the series returns to its 30th visit to the rolling hills of central Ohio. As always, our coverage of both the AMA Pro Daytona Sport Bike and Superbike Championship Series will run over the course of this weekend and features two races for each category. Hi everyone, I'm Jonathan Green and along with former AMA Pro and World Superbike Champion Scott Russell who incidentally won here three times in his 750 Supersport days and Daniel Teal in the pits, it's my pleasure to host the fourth round of the championship. But before we go trackside, I want to look back at the AMA Pro Superbike Round 3 which took place in Birmingham, Alabama at Barber Motorsports Park. So race one and a jump start by the Yamaha pole position Josh Hayes and the Suzuki of 54 Roger Hayden both given a five second penalty. Hayden led early on, Cadena second, but here comes the man himself. At Charlotte's Web, Josh Hayes going past his teammate for third place in this instance. Then at the last corner, past Cardenas into second place and then chasing down Roger Hayden again at the hairpin to take the lead this time, which he wouldn't relinquish. Roger Hayden would chase him home, another win for Hayes. On to race two and a clean start by everyone this time. Josh Herring leading the way from his teammate Hayes. But Hayes gathering pace and once again going into Charlotte's Web. He takes the lead and does it with ease. Roger Hayden would get up to second place and chase down Hayes for the rest of the race. But again, he was playing bridesmaid to the champion as Josh Hayes marched on to yet another victory and gets ever closer to that championship lead. So, just how close is it? Well, Martin Cardenas leads the way, but Josh Hayes is right there in second place, just a few points ahead of his teammate, Josh Herron. And, in fact, now, if Hayes wins the first race today, takes the pole position and leads the most laps, easier said than done, but Cardenas finishes third, Josh Hayes will lead the championship for the first time this year. Jonathan still holding the points lead is the number 36, Martin Cardenas. Martin, you were able to test your leathers at Barber in an early morning crash. Did it affect your racing at all that weekend? Not at all. That was uh, an easy crash. I lost the front tire and uh, I know what happened, so uh, at that time, no. Does it ever affect your racing? Sometimes when uh, you crash hard or when you don't know what happened, it usually affects your confidence, but uh, a lot of times, no. I would think a 120 mile per hour crash would affect one of these riders, but clearly Martin is okay. Scott? Thanks, Daniel. I'm down here with one of the best leather testers in the business. Larry, you went down to Daytona. Talk us through it. Uh, 
you know, my youthful enthusiasm outweighed my ability there and uh, got in there hot, lost it. A lot of guys crashed there that weekend. Well, the great thing was my Cortec leathers protected me. You know, they look scuffed up a little bit. Some of the sponsor logos got ripped off of them, but I didn't have a mark on me after I was done and I was able to race the rest of the weekend. Well, that's the big thing about these leathers. I mean, I raced for 20 years. I don't have a mark on me. And as you can see, Larry got out of his deal. And uh, that's what this, this sport's all about, being protected. And Scott, as you know, every rider has their own preference for those leathers. Here's another example. These are heroic leathers, and they're stage three kangaroo. Tough as you like. And you can see, look how beaten up and banged up they are. These have had four years of use in the AMA, and they're still being repaired and getting back out there every weekend. This particular set of leathers has seen 20 crashes of over 120 miles an hour, and the rider walked away each time unscathed. Coming up, Bobier continues his brilliant domination. Chris Fillmore rides through God's land, and the world champion teaches us how to ride. AMA Pro Racing Preview Show on CBS Sports Network is brought to you by Yamaha. Yamaha is the first name in motorsports. And by GEICO, saving people money on more than just car insurance. Visit GEICO.com for a free rate quote. Welcome back. This week, as we concentrate on safety, I want to draw your attention to something that seems quite simple on the surface, but is intricate and essential to a rider, and that's the gloves. These are Jeff Mays, and they're custom made to fit his hand. And look how trick they are. Predominantly, of course, leather, but look at this on the top. The knuckles themselves are protected by titanium and on the fingers by carbon fiber. Very trick indeed. Then thin leather where he needs to touch the handlebars. And more importantly, one of the most important parts, the pinky itself, because that's the first to go if you were to fall off one of these machines. Extra protection there. When you put your hand out at 130 miles an hour, you need all this protection. And there was plenty of that going on in the Daytona Sport Bikes at Barber. Great start off the line from the number 40 triumph of Jason DeSalvo, who led them away, chased by Jake Gagne in the number 32, and Bobier on the number six. Good battle between the three of them. And as they came onto the straight, it really was a three-way battle for the lead. Gagne holding on for a moment, but the triumph coming alongside. But look at this, Bobier on the inside and into second place at the first corner. And it wasn't long before Cameron Bobier gets sideways, but stylishly at Charlotte's Web and into the lead for the win. On to race two, and this time, Garrett Gerloff on the number eight got a good start. Rispoli on the number 43. Started well, but faded back. And once again, it was the number six, Bobier, passing several riders, including number 40, DeSalvo. And then a battle between the two Yamahas, which eventually would be won out by that man of the moment, Cameron Bobier of California, as he takes yet another win in the sport bike class. Now, in terms of the championship for the Daytona Sport Bikes, obviously Cameron Bobier with 152 points has a massive lead, but Jake Gagne still in contention in second place. And now JD Beach is getting in the mix in third place with 132. Now, of course, these young men are still trying to graduate with a degree in speed, but we have our professor who's going to teach us more about riding these beasts. Jonathan, I want to show you here how important the rider is to making this bike work and really becoming one with the motorcycle. Obviously the handlebars and the foot pegs, all the levers are adjustable for the riders, but to ride the motorcycle, you'll see the riders on the straightaway in a tuck position, obviously to get out of the wind and become more aerodynamic. Now when they arrive at a braking zone, you're going to see them sit up, they'll apply the brake and, and that'll create a wind, a brake effect in their body. Now, for instance, the left-hand corner, you don't actually turn the, the handlebars to make the bike turn. What you want to do is load the foot peg on the left side and drop in your head and drop in your body off to the inside. That is what makes these motorcycles turn. It's a very physical sport, and that's why a lot of these motorcycle riders are cyclists, because your legs are really doing most of the work. And if you do it right, that frees up your hands to, to work the important controls. And at the end of the day, if you've done it right, you get to stand up and celebrate like number one Josh Hayes does so many times. Well, we've certainly seen Scott Russell up on the pegs like that many a time before. Thanks, Scott. But of course, there's many different ways to ride. Consider Chris Fillmore of the KTM team and his superbike training where he goes out to some of the most beautiful countryside in the world in Asheville, North Carolina. 
It's 1 a.m. in the morning. I just landed in Atlanta. Headed up to Russell Bobbitt's house to meet up with him and Nick Ferringer. We have a few KTM Adventure 990s waiting for us. We have some bicycle racks mounted to them and we are headed to the Pisgah Enduro right outside of Asheville, North Carolina. This helps me get ready for racing because it's just, I guess we're out here on motorcycles and bicycles and just having a good time and it's relaxing. It takes my, you know, my worries of racing away for the weekend and, you know, you go into the race weekend relaxed and not thinking too much about it. I would definitely say majority of the road racers train on road bicycles, but I like nature. I like being outside in the woods and you know, the downhills and riding a mountain bike is just a whole nother level of fun. Being out here, it's definitely both, you know, like both serenity and keeping my reflexes sharp. Like we're on the bike, we're, I'm racing at a competitive level and I'm also, you know, trying my hardest on these races. So it's like, it's a competitive thing and it's kind of relax, vacation, kick back, you know. Doing this kind of stuff is nice when we have a, a break between races because it's fun to get out and like, you know, see the countryside and see the, where we live and like the pot, all the different mountains and roads, trails and, you know, meet different people, go to different cities, go out, eat good food, drink good beers, like it, I like that stuff. Coming up, it's our Geico Go Round. Dale Quarterly in his first ever independent win in superbikes. And Danielle and Scott give us their predictions if Scott can make it that far. Hey, imagine hey, hey, that. You know how this works. I'm going to win it this weekend. That's it. Boom. Welcome back. Now, if you choose to ride one of these war horses every weekend, protection is essential. And for the riders, one of the most important parts of their equipment is their boots. Why? It's the only connection they have between the bike and themselves are these boots. Therefore, they have to be both rigid and therefore protective, but also flexible so they can move around. Look at the inside here of this boot here. Plenty of flexibility, but plenty of hard plastic in all the right places to protect the rider, worry to come off. But also, how much are they moving on the bike? Look at Roger Hayden's bottom boot here. Look how the foot peg is denting in here. He's going through a pair of boots probably every couple of races, but that's how much hard work is going on on the bike. Danny Eslick, likewise, his teammate, has also got protectors on the outside made of plastic, extra strengthened because he's scraping his foot on the ground. So essential just how close they are to the ground and how important these pieces of equipment are. And that leads us nicely to this week's Geico Go Round. Most riders would probably agree that the most important piece of the puzzle is the full face helmet. You can see this right here, it protects the chin. The outer shell, it spreads the impact when the rider meets the ground. This EPS liner, the black liner on the inside, it absorbs the energy when they do hit. And then here in the last few years, they put in these removable cheek pads. That way, if the rider does go unconscious, they can get these out easily. Those of you who have followed Scott Russell over the years probably recognize this helmet. Some 20 odd years ago, a racer named Dr. David Kiefer had an idea of protecting the spine of a rider. He knows how important that is in this sport. Um, here it is, Alpine Star, it, and you see it flexes as the rider is able to bend over, basically pad it on the inside, and, and that's something that the riding suits don't have inside it. So the rider wears this on his body, puts the suit on over the top of it, and I think the helmet and the spinal protection obviously are the one and two most important things in this sport. When teams and riders compete in this series, they need the highest level of performance in their equipment. Danny Kelsey relies on Dynojet research products such as Dynojet Power Commander 5 Fuel Management System. This bike here is really not that special. Um, you can go to your Suzuki shop and pick it up and, uh, and that's about what we're looking at here. I haven't taken the heads off this bike, and, and, but we have a Power Commander Dynojet system on it and that's essentially what it is. 
uh, last weekend at Barber. We were only six uh, miles per hour below Josh Hayes' trap speed. So for showing up at our first Superbike event, I was pretty excited to see that. My, my uh, mechanic, Marcus, was, was thrilled to see it. So it's not too far off. The Power Commander 5, the ignition module, the auto tune, and the quick shifter, it's the easiest to install. You don't need any special technicians or anything. Uh, they're going to install a piece of software into their laptop. And at that point, basically, once you've dyno tuned it, all you've got to do is go in and check the trims for the auto tune and then reset it as, as you go. It's the one of the simplest things you'll ever do. Well, guys, I've been pecking around because I haven't had my lunch yet. And there's a food theme going on here with Daytona Sport Bike number three. He's got Jalapeno here, Benny Solis, on the side of the bike. And also, he's sponsored by Genuine Broaster Chicken. And uh, you've got an interesting background, Benny, because obviously you've got the flags of both Mexico and America you represent. Yeah, um, I've got both flags because both of my parents were born in Mexico, and although they were raised and born there, I was raised and born in the United States, but everything we've done my whole life, you know, the food we eat, the language we speak, the, the way we celebrate holidays, it's all been with a Mexican background, and it's great for me, you know, I got many Mexican fans, many American fans, and many Latin American fans, and I'm just proud to be here representing both countries. i got one question, which comes first today, the chicken or the egg, the polo or huevo? Okay, no comprendo. De nada. So then, as we get to the business end of the 2013 season, look at what's ahead. And maybe you can join us at either Laguna Seca coming up. We're going to altitude at Salt Lake City and Miller Motorsports Park. New Jersey's on the calendar. And of course, we finish at the end of September, along with World Superbikes back at Laguna. So feel free to join us. It should be some fun. AMA Pro Racing Preview Show on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Get a free rate quote today. And by 1-800-MOTORCYCLE. The lawyers at 1-800-MOTORCYCLE remind you to ride safe tonight. 1-800-MOTORCYCLE. Lawyers helping injured riders. Call or click anytime for a free consultation. Now, of course, for any rider, the biggest piece of body armor is the leathers themselves. This is Josh Herring, and these are his Italian-made Dianese leathers. Now, as you'd expect, they are leather, basically, but they are synthetic leather from Italy. Beautifully made, custom-made to fit him. But some of the other parts you might want to look at, titanium on both the shoulders and the arms, and if you look a little further down, on the knees as well. Very important when you're sliding. Another interesting thing about these particular leathers is the fact that the leathers themselves go over the boots, which sometimes, if you get stuck in the gravel, can also make it more comfortable and less easy to get out of, obviously, if you get in trouble. But the big thing about these leathers that I really like is when you turn to the back. Aerodynamically, it's built so that it works for the rider, but also there's a big back protector inside. Plus, here's where they really come to light. This has actually got an airbag in it, and it's designed that way so that if once Josh gets on the bike, clicks these buttons in, these sensors then come alive, and were he to go in the wrong direction or be out of trajectory, the GPS would show that, and he would blow up like a Pillsbury doll. So we've got the tailgate up, we've come up 30 feet, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop Josh off the tailgate and see how it works. Hey now, how about you get in the leathers and I'll throw you off? Well, uh, moving right along, uh, there's been many different winners in superbikes over the years, but only one man has won independently. His name, Dale Quarterly, back in 1993. August 8th, 1993 was the most vivid day of my life. I remember it like it was yesterday. We knew we were competitive in, in practice. We knew when we qualified fourth that we were going to have a, we had a shot at having a, you know, a really good day. As the race wore on, what you'll notice, you know, or what we noticed was the pace was way faster than I thought it was going to be. Johan will take full advantage of that lap traffic and pulls himself out about three quarters of a second lead here over the number two Vincent Hines rider, Jamie James. I mean, he was on the gas. And I put my head down and ran him back down. And Ski the Privateer is leading. He's my man, Dale Cordley. Big old drive out of turn one. Eases on by Miguel Duhamel and says, hey man, I'm gonna win this thing. When I got to him, at that moment I knew, unless I do something really stupid today, we've got this. Quarterly's your leader, and boy did he go right up the edge of the racetrack. And the thing comes 
tank slap him back on the racetrack. James goes by, we get down to the first turn. I get back by him and I just, for the next three laps, I just head down as fast as I can go. He's got it. Waterly up onto the front straightaway. Checkered flag waves and Dale Quarterly wins his first ever AMA National Superbike race. And you're crying just talking about it. When we first got to pit road and I was crying then, <clears throat> and then to see my father's face, my wife's face, you know, you, it kind of started all over again. When I got off and had a walk over to Victory Circle, it was uh, 200 people standing in ovation to get from the motorcycle to the winter circle, that that was great. It was like the Earnhardt thing when they all high-fived him at the Daytona. Maybe not quite as grand of a scale, but anybody that was there was there. They had all come to pit road. So, you know, it was good to, to get the feedback from your, you know, fellow competitors. Come on, Josh. I mean, do the jump. I mean, I just want to see how the suit works. And plus, I'm kind of afraid of heights. Guess you better get an airbag suit then. Oh, well, I guess I know who I'm backing this weekend, that brave man. And for all our other predictions, let's go to Scott and Danielle. Thanks, Jonathan. Well, Heron has been flying lately, but I'm going to have to go with the number 54 of Roger Hayden. And in Daytona Sport Bike, it's hard to bet on anybody but the number six of Cameron Bobier. Scott? Danielle, my prediction for Daytona Sport Bike is going to be Dame Westby. After what I saw him do here last year, the Wolverine's definitely capable of winning here. As far as Superbike goes, well, I gotta, I gotta pick. Hey, tell me, tell me, baby, who's gonna win Superbike? You know who's gonna win Superbike, baby. Woo! I guess it's him. Nice one, boys, and I'm sure you'll get a prediction in before the season's out. But funnily enough, Scott seems to get it right every week. And for Scott Russell, Danielle Teal, and the entire team, I'm Jonathan Green. This has been a presentation of Chet Burks Productions. For scores, highlights, features, and more, go to cbssports.com, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.